The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. What do you know? The Valentines are coming in already. And here's one addressed to man's best friend. Well, that must be for you, Ethelbert. And here's one addressed to a great snooper. Ah, and that must be for you, Casey. Hmm. And here's one addressed to the most famous announcer, the man you can always count on. I wonder who that could be. I wonder. How I wonder. Oh, I get it. They mean you can always count on me to say, Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, Key Witness. Night, and a most unpleasant night. Dark, windy, damply cold. Snow is falling, the kind of snow that turns to wet gray slush as it strikes the ground, and then in spots turns to a treacherous film of ice. On an almost deserted highway, far out on the city's fringes, a car moves cautiously over the slippery pavement. In the car are... Oh, had to be our luck to draw an out-of-town assignment on a day like this, Casey. Yeah. Day part of it wasn't so bad as just coming back at night. I'm not familiar enough with this road. I can't see. Well, it. Casey, there's a big electric sign just ahead. I think it's on a roadhouse. If it is, let's pull up and have oh, a cup of coffee. Oh, we going. certainly will. A warmer upper is something both of us need. I can make out the sign now. Five Spot Cafe. That's for us. That's Five for us. Spot Cafe. Seems I've heard of the place. Yeah, the name's kind of familiar to me too, but I can't remember. Well, I guess we drive in here, huh? Yeah. That yeah, was a big parking spot. Yeah. Spot for our bus right here. About as near as we can get to the main door, I guess. Well, I'll come around and help you out, Annie. No, don't bother. I can make it. We have cameras inside. Don't forget to lock up. Yeah, I won't. Casey, doesn't uh, some racketeer run a place like the five spot? Hey, wait a minute. That's right, kid. You got it. This is Shark Yardley's headquarters. I've known the rat for years. Never been out to this joint, though. Well, I've never heard of him selling poison food, so I guess this place is as good as any other on a night like this. All right, we're all locked up. Come on. Uh-oh, electric signs just went out. Oh, nuts. It's the only light we had out here, too. I can't see ten feet in front of me. Now, wait a minute. i got a pencil flashlight in my inside pocket. Stand back in the car, Annie, out of the wind while I dig it out. Yeah. Careful with him, Pete. How oh, about being careful? Which is our car? I can't yeah, see. Yeah, I know where it is. Let's get a minute and get going. All right. Someone else is having a little trouble in the dark, Casey. <laughs> More than we're having. You see that drunk those two guys had between them? They passed close enough for that. He could hardly stand. They were practically dragging him along. Mm. Well, he want to take the pledge tomorrow. Where is that darn flashlight, anyway? <laughs> I found it here. Car's pulling out. Guess they got the drunk inside, okay? Yeah. Oh, nuts. Now it doesn't work. Try the flashlight? Yeah, the battery must be dead. Oh, again. we don't need it now. The signs come on again. Uh, that's a break. All right, come on, let's get into that cafe. Yeah, I hope there's plenty of heat in there and chill through. Hey, wait a second. What? I kicked something in this slush here. Huh? Oh, I heard it. Uh, hotel key. At least it has a hotel tag attached to it. Yeah, wait, let me wipe some of this muck off it. Harwell Hotel, room 1118. Maybe one of those men dropped it who were taking the drunk home. Eh, well, if the drunk dropped it, they're going to have some extra trouble taking him home unless they know his <laughs> hotel and room number. He'll never be able to tell them. Uh-uh. Well, I'll stick the key in my pocket and turn it over to somebody inside the joint here. Maybe inquiries for it. Let me help you on these steps, Annie. They're pretty slippery. Yeah, thanks. Oh, boy, it's going oh, to get inside. Oh. The dining room's pretty crowded, Annie. Let's look in the bar. No customers in there. We'll get quicker service. We'll get the bartender to bring us coffee and sandwiches. Huh? Okay. Good evening. Well, it's really a very lousy evening, bartender. Yeah, surely tell me. You uh, just drove up here? Yeah, give me a menu, will you? Okay. 
Here you are. Casey, where'd you get that blood on your hand? Huh? Blood? Yeah, look. Yeah, I see. Cut yourself, mister? Well, not that I know of. Annie. Hmm? This hotel key I found. I thought it was simply wet with slush and snow. But look at it under these bright lights. Tag is streaked with blood. Hey, you... You... You found that key, mister? Yeah, at a room 1118, Harwell Hotel. Well, give me it. Somebody might come and ask you for it. I didn't say I found it anywhere near here, did I? Uh, no, 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 you didn't. Uh, excuse me a minute, will you? Hmm? Casey, how did fresh blood get on that key? I don't know, Annie. I don't know why that bartender showed such an interest in it, either. I do know this joint belongs to Shark Yardley, who's made quite a few guys bleed plenty. The bartender just went into that back room. Yeah. Annie, I got a hunch we'd better get out of this place. So have I. Okay, come on. Uh -oh. Call the door of the back room, Dinto. Yardley, one of his rod men. Well, if it isn't my old friend Casey. Hello, Shark. Well, I never hoped to see you in this little joint of mine. It's so off the beaten track. Well, we newspaper guys get around, you yeah, know. So I've heard. Well, I want you and the lady to have a drink with me. In my private office. Oh, thanks, Shark, but we're in a hurry. But I must insist you step into my private office. I want to talk privately to you about a key. I think I see the outline of a gun in your pocket. Casey. Shall we go to my office? All right, come on, Annie. Thank you. And be very quiet. There are guests in my dining room I wouldn't want to stir. Yes, come right in. Now, sit down, lady. This chair is the most comfortable. It looks comfortable. Now, before I ask my friend Casey to sit down, frisk him, Nick. Okay, boy. I don't carry a gat, Shark. Guns aren't part of my racket. Oh, I believe that, Casey, but I like to be sure. He's clean, boss. Here's the key that was in his pocket. Where did you get this key, Casey? You undoubtedly know that I picked it up in your parking lot. You mind telling me why it's so important to you? You have no idea? No. I'm just a dumbbell. Because I don't believe you're a dumbbell, I'm keeping you here for a while. And I'm leaving Nick here to watch you while I join my guests in the dining room. How long are you going to keep us here? We'll discuss that when I come back, lady. Now I must return to the cafe. Now you see, I have reason to wish that my guests see a lot of me this evening. <laughs> Make Casey and the lady comfortable, Nick. I'll take care of them, boss. Now, uh, excuse me, won't you? as though we've walked into something, Casey. Don't say we have, Annie, and without our galoshes on. Yeah, and you ain't walking out of it, neither. Shark told you to make us comfortable, Nick. That's not the way to do it. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Sit down and take a load off your feet. No, I'd rather stand. Uh, Sit down, I'm a blast well, you. since you put it so nicely, I will. What made the electric sign on this joint go out a while ago, Nick? Huh? Oh, did the sign go out? Yeah, yeah, just... Long enough for two guys who were propping up a third guy to get him into a car and drive away. You saw them guys, huh? Well, I think your boss figures we did. The third guy wasn't just drunk, was he? Casey, that, that Sure, Annie, you... yes. Was the third guy dying, Nick, or already dead? I ain't here to answer questions. Maybe the boss will before you leave us. I, I wish you wouldn't talk like that. <laughs> Can't take it, huh? Well, I, I... It isn't easy to take, you know. <clears throat> The shark said he'd stand us a drink when he brought us in here. I, I see a bottle on his desk there. Uh, hundred proof, too. Do you mind? Keep if... your mitts off that bottle. Listen, look, the least you can do is let a guy have a drink. I, I, I need it, fella. <laughs> to buck you up, wise guy? To brace you for what's coming? Well, put it that way if you want to. Look, can I have a shot? Huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? What? Tilt that bottle slow and easy into one of them glasses. If you try to lift the bottle or throw it, I'll plug you before it leaves your hand. I won't... Take any chances like that with you, Nick. This suits you all right? So far. Now put the bottle down. Yeah, just as you say. <laughs> you poured a stiff one for yourself, didn't you? Yeah, I, I need it. Well, ain't you offering the lady none? I don't want anything to drink. And I don't want anything to drink. Oh. Oh. He threw that whiskey in his eyes, Casey. That's right, a hundred proof stuff, too. All right, I'm not getting cold, Annie. Okay, I got his gun. <coughs> Give it to me. Here. Tap him gently on the head with it so you'll stay out till we make our getaway. That'll do it. We can't go out this door through the bar. Come on, there's a window here. Only a short drop to the ground. Come on, you first. Okay. All right? Yeah, all right. Come on. Right with you. Now let's get to our car, yeah. the nearest police station. Did you have to throw?
throw a half tumbler of that good whiskey in the guy's eyes, Casey? Uh, well, it was worth it, Ethelbert. <laughs> I'll say. Well, what happened after you made your escape from that joint last night? Twenty minutes later, we were back at the Five Spot Cafe with a carload of pop. Yeah, but Shark Yardley and his gorillas were gone, of course. Hmm. How you figure blood got on that key you found? The body of Chuck Trumbull was found in a vacant lot way over on the south side this morning. Chuck Trumbull? He's the character who's been trying to bust in on Shark Yardley's racket. Uh-huh. Right? Shark paid him off last night. Trumbull was stabbed to death with his own knife. The police found it sticking in his body. And Trumbull lived in room 1118 of the Harwell Hotel. Eh? Well, then that key you found... Well, when right. Yardley learned that we had the key with the blood on it, he knew it would put him on the spot for Trumbull's murder. And as he'd planned the murder, there was to be no evidence that Trumbull had been anywhere near the Five Spot Cafe. In fact... Shark Yardley's alibi would be that he was at the five spot when Trumbull was killed someplace else. Yeah, but that key to Trumbull's hotel room found in Shark's parking lot was proof he'd been there. Yeah, that's it. Ah. And when Yardley's brought to trial, Casey's testimony and mine about that key will send him to the chair. Hmm. The cops ain't caught up with the shark yet? No, but they will. Hmm. Until they do, I'd be pretty worried... If I was you. Worried? Oh, the shark's a bad baby, Casey. This Trumbull ain't the first guy he suspected of bumping off. No. Perhaps think he got Ed Clive last year. Yeah, with Clive's own gun. Like you think he carved Trumbull with Trumbull's own knife. And there was that uh, gambler a couple of years ago. I forget his name. Oh, um, Ernie Hastings. Yeah. And the cops could never prove nothing. What I mean is, Shark Yardley ain't going to like having a couple of witnesses loose that can finally fry him as he deserves to be fried if they stay loose. I'm not worried about the shark. He'll be too busy dodging cops to bother Ann and me. <laughs> Besides, we've been witnesses against his kind of rats before. Well, he, he's a special mean kind of rat, Miss Williams. A special dangerous kind. Look, Annie, it's after midnight. It's time I took you home. Hmm? Yeah, I'm ready to go home. I'm tired. Well, here's what we had, pal. Gee, you're paying for a change. Huh? Well, I always pay. Don't I? Well, eventually. Don't I? Yeah. Good night. Good night, Casey. Good night, Miss Williams. Good night, Ethelbert. Casey. Huh? Ethelbert may be right. Shark Yardley might try to put us out of the way. Oh, he and his mob have got to keep themselves undercover, Annie. Yeah, hey, but look, tomorrow morning, I'm going to ask headquarters to put a guard on you for a while. How about you? Oh, I can take care of myself. Huh? Well, so can I. Oh, wait a minute. Women are different. Really? I wasn't sure you were aware of that. Huh? What do you mean? I... nothing. Annie, are you getting one of your humors again? It's a woman's privilege to have humors. Oh. I don't like to discuss nothing but the latest crimes and the newspaper business with you all the time and sit around and, and be the same as Ethelbert and Captain Logan. Oh, you couldn't be the same as Ethelbert and Captain Logan. No, not quite, because my hair is longer and I wear skirts. <laughs> well, okay. So your hair's longer and you wear skirts. And that's that. And that's got to be that. I'm not going to lose a pal. Meaning me. Meaning you. I'm beginning to hate that word, pal. What's the matter with it? I like it. I like what it stands for, too. Come on, the car's across the street. Let's cross over right here, huh? Okay. <clears throat> now, look, getting back to Shark Yardley. I'm sure there'll be no danger from him for a while, Annie, if ever. The heat's on him heavy, and he's got the lie Casey, line. that car! Get it Jump, Annie! Well, it's, it's only missed it by hair. If you hadn't pulled me out of the way, the I would... The driver swerved way across the center line. So he was trying to run us down. Then he kept right on going. Yeah, well, I think he did try to run us down, Casey. Huh? Yeah, I got to look at that driver. And I'm sure he was... Shark Yardley. This is the season of buffet suppers and other informal entertaining. Now, when it's necessary to serve an unusually large number of guests, jadeite is the ideal answer. Yes, jadeite. Spelled J-A-D-E-I-T-E, jadeite. The new kind of dinnerware developed by Anchor Hawking. You'll love its delicate jade green color, its fine porcelain-like texture, and you'll be amazed to find that jadeite is as strong and heat-proof as the Fire King oven glass you use for baking. Yet, with all its advantages, jadeite is incredibly low in price. For example, a jadeite cup and saucer costs only 15 cents in open stock, 
and a complete 35-piece dinner service for six, including cups, sauces, dessert dishes, salad plates, dinner plates, vegetable bowl, platter, and sugar and creamer set is priced at less than $5. Ask for Jadeite at chain stores, department stores, hardware stores, and other stores selling chinaware and glass. Jadeite is the newest triumph of anchor hawking. The most famous name in glass. argue with me, Casey. Both well, you and this Williams get police bodyguards from now on. Well, after what happened half an hour ago, Captain Logan, I'm delighted. Well, I'm not, and I won't stand for it. How could I have one of your cops at my elbow 24 hours a day, Logan? I'd feel like a sap. You'd rather feel like a dead sap who don't feel anything at all? Listen, the driver of that car may not have been shock yard. Oh, yes, Casey. I, I thought... think he was the driver, and I don't think this will be his last attempt to get you. You two are the key witnesses against him, and while he's on the loose, you're on the spot. Well, okay, all right, you and aside from bodyguards, I'm giving each of you a gun to carry. No, give one of them to Ann. I'm not looking to gat around. Hey, Casey, please. No, no, no. I don't like the thing. I carry him and I won't shoot him. All right, bullhead. Now, look, since I must have bodyguards, give me guys who won't be hard to take, Logan, will you? I mean, preferably bad pinochle players. Now, I'll put Bradley in charge of your guard detail. Does he suit you? Yeah, Brad's okay. <laughs> but will he get worn out following me on assignments? <laughs> Come on, hurry up, Brad. City desk says there's a rest job. We left my car down the street here. Well, where are we going now, Casey? City Hall. An appointment assignment to take pictures of the mayor's newly appointed park commissioner. Say, uh, you get all the dirty work? <laughs> Who takes all the pictures of those pinup gals I see in the papers? Oh, the very old press photographers. <laughs> well, you've been my shadow for five days now, Brad. How do you like it? I'll be glad to get back to the straight detective business. Yeah, say, look, you know, Logan's making saps out of both of us. Shark Yardley hasn't tried anything, and he won't try anything. They tried to make a hit-and-run morgue case out of you. Yeah. I think Miss Williams only imagined that Shark was in that car. And nothing's happened since. Logan's just wasting your time and the city's money, Brad, and that's a fact. Well, here's the old bus. Get in, get going. Okay. Uh, Casey, huh? don't step on that starter. Huh? Don't touch the starter. When we left this car half an hour ago, its hood was covered with snow. Yeah. Most of the snow's fallen off. Maybe because somebody raised the hood. I'm going to see. Well, why would anybody raise the hood? Uh, somebody did. And put this underneath. What is it, Brad? Look. It's attached to your starter. I think it's a little TNT. A uh, bomb, huh? Uh-huh. The old gangster gag. When you started your car, Bluey. Bluey, yeah. Oh, thanks, Brad. <clears throat> it maybe Logan was right. Okay, okay, Logan. All right. I've been the sap and you've been the wise guy. You finally think so. Huh? Well, don't rub it in now, pal. Why not? Even after Bradley found that bomb in your car two weeks ago, you gave me an argument. Since then, a 45 slug's gone through your head and a knife's been thrown at you. I know, I know. But still, you argue. Even with all the luck of the Irish you've got, you should be dead by now. Well, my luck can't last forever again. Plenty jittery right now. Yeah, uh, since this morning, after you learned Miss Williams had received a box of candy through the mails, it turned out to be poison. Look, if she'd been sap enough to eat one of those candies, Logan, Fortunately, I... she wasn't. You'd probably have swallowed a couple. We've got to stop this, you know. We've got to nail this guy, Yardley. How, exactly? You know we've turned this town inside out trying to find him. We've got to make him come to us. That's a beautiful idea. Just what method will you take Wait a minute. To... I think I've figured a method. Yeah? What? The shark's got a big fat grudge against me, Logan. He's a guy who always settled his grudges in person when he could. Well, I want him to have an opportunity to get into my apartment at night unmolested. What do you mean? I want the guard who watches my fire escape to apparently sneak away from his post every night and do a little guzzling at a bar around the corner. I'd like him to make a special habit of doing it between 2 and 3 a.m. So Shark will be tipped off and pay you a call by way of the fire escape? Right. Now then what? I'm going to take that gun you offered me. 
Casey, I doubt if you'd shoot a guy even to save your own life. I'll kill Sharky Yardley if I have to, but he ought to save me that trouble. You know, crooks and killers usually follow a set pattern. They stick to old habits. I don't get you. Well, I'll explain it later, but right now, you tell my fire escape guard to play hooky between 2 and 3 a.m., and do I get a gun? I'm always a sap for you, pal. All right, I'll instruct the guard, and I'll give you... My best gun, a 38 positive and a 45 frame. No, no, I don't want a revolver. I want a rifle. Rifle? Yeah. A big caliber rifle with a silencer attached. Silencer? Yeah. And Logan, look, we'll have to let Bradley and the rest of my shadows in on this, of course. But don't let it go any further. Especially, uh, don't tell Ann Williams about my plan. I'm not to tell Miss Williams. Suppose you tell me about your plan, and now... <laughs> Well, okay, Brad, here's the old homestead again. Time to go through our usual routine. Yeah, well, I don't like the routine that's become usual during the last week, Casey. Yeah. You taking a big chance with nobody watching that fire escape between 2 and 3 in the morning? I'm watching. But you're not used to handling guns. Well, I can handle a rifle Logan gave me. Also, I've had lots of experience handling crooks. Uh, all I can do is hope you'll be okay. Shark may show up any time now, Casey, maybe tonight. Yeah, the sooner the better. Mr. Williams is losing a lot of sleep. She's got nothing to worry about. She hasn't a fire escape. Well, come on, Brad. Let's get out of this car. You come up to my apartment as usual, look the joint over as usual, then come back here down to the street as usual. Then you'll turn out your lights as usual. Uh, and I'll seem to be sleeping soundly between 2 and 3 a.m. Uh, what if you do fall asleep, Casey? Well, in that case, I... Well, I won't. <laughs> Find that flashlight. Only me, Casey. Chalk. Don't reach for that gun beside your bed. I guess I won't. Don't. I'll turn that table lamp on so I can see you and that gun a little better. Okay. Thanks. Well, you look like just the same sap who butts into things he should keep away from. Well, that gun of yours. Nice high-powered rifle that can make a big hole in a guy. Why the silencer on it? Well, it... I had the attachment when I got it from the, from the cops. Wasn't that nice? Revolver I brought along has a silencer, too. But I always like to use the other fellow's weapon if he has one. If I'm unlucky and fall into a pinch, a good lawyer may convince a jury that the other fellow was uh, a suicide. You, you're going to shoot me with my rifle? Yes, Casey. After I've made sure it's loaded. It is. Now, Don't shock yellow, aren't you? Afraid to take it. Put down that gun. I'm putting the muzzle against your head. The cops will be sure this was a suicide. It will be if you squeeze that trigger. Your suicide. What do you mean? You look to see if it was loaded. It is. You didn't look to see if the barrel is clear. It isn't. It's been plugged. So the shell in the chamber will blow up the gun. Yeah, this is a bluff. You can't get away with it. It gun. isn't a bluff. Nuts. Take what I came to give you. Oh, oh. You snapped the trap yourself, Shock. I can't say I'm really sorry. We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. The baby of today, your baby, has many advantages which most of us didn't enjoy when we were very young. And not the least of these are scientifically prepared baby foods. These baby foods make it easy to provide a nourishing, well-balanced diet. They save the young mother countless hours in the kitchen. But to take full advantage of the convenience of prepared baby food, be sure to insist on glass jars. For with a glass jar, you can heat and serve baby food and reseal it to store leftovers all in the original container, saving endless extra hours of work each week. And then, too, there's the matter of cleanliness. Glass jars are completely sterile. They protect baby food perfectly both before and after opening. Most of the better brands of prepared baby foods are packed in anchor glass jars 
and sealed under vacuum with easy-to-open, easy-to-reseal Anchor caps. Both products of Anchor Hocking. The most famous name in glass. of that rifle didn't kill the shark, huh, Casey? No, Ethelbert, miraculously enough. The docs will have him patched up for his trial on a Trumbull murder charge, and he'll be able to walk to the hot seat afterwards. But how could you be sure he'd try to shoot you with that rifle instead of his own gun, Casey? Look, now, he, he'd kill Trumbull with Trumbull's own knife, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. And Clive with Clive's own pistol. Ah. Uh-huh. Well, that was Shark's murder pattern, don't you think? That's right. Well... I'm awful glad it's over, Casey. Oh, my, Annie. I'm sure glad to get rid of that bodyguard. <laughs> you know, I'll miss mine. Huh? Miss having a cop at your elbow every minute? Well, my principal guard was nice. I liked him. Yeah? Nice looking, too. You met him. I... Oh, yeah, yeah, I met him, sure. <laughs> of course, I... I won't miss him too much. Oh? Huh? We have a date together this evening. Oh. Have a date, huh? With a cop tonight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but look, you know, Annie, you, you and I usually go out together every evening. At... Oh, but you and I are just pals, Casey. Huh? I said, we're just pals. Oh. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I must be running along to meet him now. So long, Ethelbert. Hey, so long, Miss Williams. Good night, pal. Good night. <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> Pal. <laughs> <laughs> Nuts. Crime Photographer, starring Stott Scottsworth as Casey, is written by Alonzo Dean Cole. It is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor glass containers, anchor caps and closures. All products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deeds and is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. Original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. If you're a young man from 17 to 31 years of age, the Navy is interested in you, and you'll be interested in the Navy. Well, the Navy offers you training in the most extensive scientific schools in the world, combined with travel and adventure, good pay, financial security, and early retirement. Get in touch with your local Navy recruiting office immediately. This is Tony Marvin saying goodnight for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.